Hello, hello, everybody. Hey, Ray. Hey, Rem. Hey, Liara. Hello. Hello, Yolana, as well. Hello, hello. How's it going, everybody? Happy Monday. Don't mind me just doing some last minute researching on the topic at hand today. Gotta study up, you know? Hey, Clips. Hello, hello. Hi. How are you doing? I've seen you use that heart emoji a couple of times. It's great. Perfect also for, for Pride Month, so. How are you doing, Eclipse? Thank you, by the way, for, um, for posting all those photos. I haven't had a chance to respond, I guess, directly to them, but I'm responding right now to you. Uh, thank you so much for posting a bunch of those photos from the garden party yesterday. Those are beautiful. As always, your work is phenomenal. I need to create like an archive. I, I want to like, it's like on my to-do list of uh, kind of building out like a little, I don't know, like a, a more proper history or something of a bunch of the stuff that we've done. So like certain garden parties, prom nights, like a bunch of these things. Like we have all these photos and we have all this, this awesome stuff that every, you know, that you guys have made or that I've created or like that we've, you know, come up with together. And I, I feel like there needs to be like a central what do you call it? Like the, a canon of our, our, a documentation or something like that. An archive of like awesome stuff that we've been doing. And stepping up your Jeep pose. I, 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 yeah, it, it shows. It shows. You have definitely, um, I mean, definitely <laughs> been improving. Um, even just from the time that I first met you. But I mean, even when I met you already, like, I mean, your guys, you, like, your G-Post stuff has been phenomenal. I've been noticing a lot of people actually stepping at their G-Post game. I know, um, you know, Aramor has been step, uh, doing more with G-Post. Julia was doing more with G-Post. Um, like, a whole bunch of you guys have been posting a bunch of stuff. And I've noticed the progression of like people getting a little more adventurous with the filters and the colors and the angles and stuff. Like it's great. Although each shot you take takes 50 to 20 minutes. Yeah, I think that's partially too because you're like very much custom posing though, right? And I, I don't know. I've never tried using, like, I've never really gotten deeper into, like, the custom posing. And, like, I mean, I, I think probably you also have, like, much more elaborate shaders and filters and stuff um, than, like, for me, I mean, it's mostly just G-Shade. Or uh, G-Pose, the base one. It is a rabbit hole, for sure. No pun intended. Um, yeah, I mean, actually, I guess now that you're saying that, as I'm thinking about it, that makes a lot of sense because... On my end, it'd be the equivalent of like that I take screenshots and then I touch them up in Photoshop a little bit because I don't have like shaders and stuff like that. So sometimes like if they're really dark or something, I'll change the exposure a bit. But just like even something as simple as just like trying to bump the contrast or the brightness up slightly, I feel like it can be such a rabbit hole of like endless slider tweaking, right? Like, is it 10 points, 12 points? No, 10 points nine points no you know like and then then you change like the contrast and you're like oh crap now that i put the contrast up my brightness is off so i'm gonna like switch it back and it's like this whole back and forth kind of thing 
I will say if I do, I mean, well, actually, there's probably many things. But one of the things that I would look forward to when I have like um, a more proper like stream PC rig, ideally, would be the idea that I could have like a uh, like G shade or reshade or something. If nothing else, because I could get much more beautiful, like much more like artsy shots in prominence and at, at, at events and stuff, or even like certain times when we're doing builds or something, I think it would just be fun to really play around with all those shaders and have and not have to always do everything in post. <laughs> Cause it's like, yeah. Nimbus, hey, what's up, Nimbus? Welcome back to the stream. Is that little heart you? I just realized. Nimbus, yeah, you're it's it's your own emote. That's cool. Cute. <clears throat> Wait, Nimbus, do you stream? Or does do each does everyone on Twitch have their own ability to upload their own separate emotes? You do. Oh man. I didn't know that. Nimbus, what do you stream? Or, or did I know that? I might have known that. I apologize. Sometimes I'm, I, I get mixed up with with different things that people are all doing and stuff. But um, you can only upload emotes as affiliate. Okay, so you must have hit affiliate then. So, okay, so I guess in short, yeah, you kind of anybody who wants to upload emotes has to stream at least a little bit. But then once, from my understanding, once you hit affiliate, you're affiliate for life. I think unless you violate terms of service probably or something but um then you could kind of keep it uh keep the ability at least and even on a casual level once you hit affiliate so you mainly stream 14 but also a variety streamer cool yeah yeah like when you say variety i mean do you like just chatting or is it mostly like just other gameplay and stuff or um, you know, because I mean, variety obviously can be tons of different things like music or, you know, art and clips saying it took about a month to learn G shade before I figured out my next project that, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think that that's good. I think, or like, I think sometimes you just need to do a little bit of a deep dive on your software, right. And just like, you know, buckle down for like a month or something like that and try to learn a lot of the basics and kind of the fundamentals of something. Because like the software these days, you know, especially when it comes to a lot of these art softwares, it's just maybe like us art softwares or code softwares and stuff like both of them. It's just, it's so, they're so beautifully complex uh, and like limitless in their potential. But, but you need to kind of like know what, to do like where to start right there's just like like photoshop i think g shade you know davinci resolve premiere whatever the, the ones you use i mean it's just like it's like 600 sliders basically or 600 toggles and menus and stuff and it can be quite daunting to even know where to begin with all those like just even looking at people's um g shade reshade you know whatever they use their presets and just looking at the um, the workflow, right, is is pretty like like shh. if you see someone's screenshot of their preset, because I think I mean understandably a lot of people will just take someone else's preset and just tweak it or something, um, or even just use it right out of the box because like I mean if it ain't broke, you know. Um, but like it's an interesting exercise of just like looking at the the reshade preset and just like reading through the 20 items in the in a row and seeing how many of those line items you understand what it's doing you know like okay like like light bloom what what is this right like okay like depth of field what is that what is you know um bokeh or like what is you know um i mean Sharpening. How does sharpening interact with the bokeh? I mean, which one should come first or second? Like, it's uh, it's like a whole, it's it's like a puzzle, right? Which I think can be a lot of fun for a lot of people. Um, like, I, I think that's how I look at a lot of this, like housing, you know, uh, reshade, g shade stuff. I think it's a lot of fun, just to kind of, um, yeah, try to. Oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, 
just to try to like figure out how all this stuff works and how it all interacts with each other. Hello, Laura, by the way. Hi, welcome to the stream. Um, let's see, before, okay, before I even get, uh, I'm gonna get back to what, what we're talking about too here in chat, but before I even uh, get back to that, I just wanna throw it out there. So today's stream is going to be kind of like a combo of like just chatting and then the story time in a way. Um, so not so much building is what I'm saying. Hold on, let me clean clean this UI up a bit. Boop. Okay. Um, so today, per the title, I'm going to be talking about a lot of the builds that inspired me and kind of like how I, I guess why I'm the way I am, like, you know, a lot of how I arrived at the builder, the 14 designer that I am. <laughs> Um, and so a lot of that is going to be like me sitting here in the yard and pulling up reference material. So I'm going to be pulling up, uh, tweets and images and stuff and kind of trying to explain through it because a lot, some of these builds like I can't get to, or they're just, you know, torn down by now. Um, and it would just, I think, um, yeah, it's a lot <laughs> in, in prepping for this stream. I realize that I didn't prep enough, um, like I was trying to come, like to try to succinctly boil down stuff. And there's just so much, there's so many things that I want to say, so many builds that influenced me or that, you know, had some kind of an effect. And there's so much of how all of those builds interweave with my own builds and like how they go. So like, I might, this might be like version 1.0 of this story. Or there might have to be like a follow-up stream or like a 2.0 or a full-length five-hour documentary or something. Um, just because I'm realizing how much I could say about a lot of this and how how much I would love to really properly tribute a lot of these wonderful creations that people have made. Um, like, And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that live and semi-off-the-cuff during this stream. So I'm going to do my best. But bear with me, um, I might jump around a little bit because it's a lot of, it's like a, it's like a whole web of stuff, you know, that I'm trying to thread together in a storyline. And I'm realizing that it might even be better suited as like a script, more of a scripted kind of edited thing in a 2.0 version. But um, we're going to have some fun. We're just going to, we're just going to talk. So at the same time, it's much, as much my story time as it is also your chance for Q&A, I guess. And it's like a chance for you to also just like, you know, we, it's like a, let's like talk about stuff that's inspiring us. Let's just get inspired together and let's just kind of have a, a big open chat. Um, let's have fun with this, right? Uh, and the last point is, I will actually have to end the stream a little bit early today because right after this stream, I'm scheduled to start a DJ set over at Neon Sunset. Um, originally it was going to be Dark Divinity, but they're um, actually redoing Dark Divinity on a different at a different house. They got a medium on the last lottery, so they're moving it over there. Um, so that starts right at six when this is scheduled to end. So I'm going to have to cut the stream short a little bit. Uh, so um, just letting everybody know. But honestly, thinking about as I was thinking about this whole stream, I realized that this probably merits like a much longer stream and or an even deeper dive on my end and then a presentation, you know, to you guys, um, you know, like Ted talk, a, a real Ted talk kind of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, okay. Let me quickly catch up here with the chat. So, um, Nimbus saying, so other game Nimbus, Nimbus streams 14 a lot, but then other games and stuff. I stick to RPGs mainly, but I do casual games every once in a while. Just chill. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. Nimbus, well, we'll have to, have to try to pop into one of your streams uh, sometime. That's cool. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear. I'm glad I know now that you you do stream. If anybody didn't know, and is you know, I mean, I think a lot of you guys are starting to recognize each other's names. But so Nimbus, Nimbus streams. Um, so uh, you know what? That's that's a good a reason as any to bust out this. There you go, Nimbus. All right, so if you're not aware, Nimbus Gray also does streaming uh, Final Fantasy, as well as some uh, RPGs and other casual games and such. So uh, shout out to Nimbus Gray 
go give them a follow and check out um check out their stuff i certainly want to so um yeah shout out to you nimbus uh also yeah so hello laura hello aramore rem is saying uh i love people's ins i love people's inspiration process and finding out a little insider to them so i'm very excited to be part of this stream oh, i'm glad to have you here rem so uh kaya welcome welcome into the stream Oh, Nimbus. Oh, so Nimbus. Oh, very fun MSQ stream. I'll have to take some notes. I've only done a little bit MSQ streaming myself once, and I feel like I kind of did a bit of a scuffed job with it. So um, I'd love to um, figure out a little more of um, how I can maybe... Well, I mean, you know, you always want to keep improving as an entertainer and everything. So, um, yeah. Hey, if you guys want to come hang out, I'm going to be chilling in my yard here. Um, I think that's the whole thing here. The whole point of the yard here is it's a place to hang out. So if you guys want to hang out, I put the yard address there below the gameplay footage. So if you want to just come chill while I'm talking about this stuff, I'll be chilling here. I might leave every now and then if I'm going to like go showcase something, um, like little bits of my own builds or something. But uh, yeah, please feel free to come by and hang out. I'd love to just kind of have some more of these casual streams where we're just like chatting and hanging out basically. and. Um, the whole point, again, yeah, of, of building out a, a, a place to hang out, you know, whether it's over here, whether it's near the fire, um, is so that we have spaces to just chill. So, yes, yeah, soon with DC Travel 2, everybody who is somewhere else can come and join. And I look very much look forward to, I know a lot of people in the housing community are very looking forward to seeing each other's builds as well as being able to actually all hang out together in full glams and everything. So... Yes, okay, so um, <laughs> let us get started with this sort of passion splainy story thing that I am going to attempt to do here. In the beginning, there was light, and then, um, well, no, so I guess, so this is the part where there's like so many ways I could take this. I, I think I'll just start from right from the top, which is, so in case anybody does not know, a little background on me and my sort of, I guess, experience slash uh, story within 14 is I, um, I'm aware, I was very aware that 14 exists for many, many years. Um, my friend, like back in, I think, high school or something like that. Um, I forget when exactly. He played 14, like very early on in the early days of 14. And he told me about it. Um, and uh, I didn't, I kind of like did the free trial at the time. Uh, and I didn't actually... At the, at the time, the free trial, we did not have the award-winning MMORPG with unlimited free trial. It was a f limited free trial back then, and I never actually played much of the game. I spent my entire time just creating characters. So I think, like, right away from, from a 14 perspective in, in Final Fantasy, I've always been, like, just in love with the aesthetic and just the look of everything, um, so to say. Uh, so I didn't actually get into 14, though, until the pandemic. So during the pandemic... Another friend who I used to play Vanilla WoW with actually messaged me and was like, hey, you want to try out 14? There's like a free trial. Why don't we just give it a go and just, you know, uh, like, let's just see what happens. And this is like April 2020. Uh, just to just to give you a bit of like a, a time marker as to like when I jumped into housing and when I jumped into all of this. Um, so basically... Um, I jumped into 14, I started playing a bit, eventually discovered um, that you could get an apartment. And I have never, so I don't I don't play Animal Crossing. Um, I've like watched people play some, you know, a bit of Minecraft or a bit of other kinds of uh, games and stuff. I've, I've done world editor. So for example, in Warcraft 3, there was like the custom campaign editor and Starcraft as well. So... I have had some background prior to coming into 14 with things like world editors and um, just like creating game worlds and stuff. I've always been kind of thinking that's really cool, but I hadn't really done it for a long time. Um, and then when I learned about the 14 apartments, I thought, and like housing in general, I thought, holy shit, that's pretty cool. Um, but I, I heard that the housing was like a really hard to get into, you know, like it was really hard to get a house. Um, ha, ha. and <laughs> look at me now, but I mean, you know, th at the time 
At the time when I first heard about housing, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to get an apartment because I heard that everyone can get one of those and I had the gill for it. Um, and I thought that'd be fun and I think that'll be enough. I legitimately said to myself, I think an apartment is going to be enough. Um, and I think I'll just, that's cool. I don't really need a house. That sounds like a lot of you know effort to get and like, I don't want to click the placard and blah, 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 blah. Oh my God. <laughs> Was I wrong on that so, so much? Um, but basically, yeah, so I I, um, I got an apartment and I still own the same apartment that I had. <laughs> and um, to this, so to this day, I still own the same exact apartment on my main um, over in the mist. And it's actually the first build that I ever completed there is still up to this day. And uh, we, I mean, I guess we could even potentially go see it. Um, so this is the reason why the story, I guess, I guess sort of it's obvious that that's, that's why the story would start is like my first, my first build, right? Um, so let me, let me quickly see what people are saying in chat. Uh, Vanilla WoW. Oh yeah, that's right. I think um, Aramori, uh, Vanilla WoW. What was my OG WoW race and class? Um, my OG race and class was... Oh, that's a good question. I don't actually know the very first thing that I did. Um, and this was like before I think like I had like easy ability to like screenshot everything. Or I didn't think about that at the time, you know, document everything. But, okay, I very strongly know that it was Hunter. I don't remember whether I was Alliance or Horde, though. And partially because I, I flip-flop back and forth a lot. <laughs> like, a lot, a lot. Um, to the point where, like, I played for, like, I think two years on and off. While, or, like, pretty... Like, you know, several hours after school every day. And, like, I never made it past level 35, I think. Like, never. And I restarted that many times. <laughs> and I also was, like, really, really into PvP. So I played just, like, a ton of Warsong Gulch. Um... So this is also why, though, I never really got into, like, the social scene of WoW. I never made it that far. I never, like, was far enough to merit, like, joining a real guild for raiding or anything like that. So, um, hey, Eclipse, welcome. Hey. Glad you could join. Here for the story time in person. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, this is great. A bunch of, like, WoW, WoW folks, we can bond over this. Um, honestly, like, I mean, I, whatever, for whatever the controversy is stuff about Blizzard and WoW and stuff these days and stuff, but like, I had a great time with Vanilla WoW, it really, it's still got a lasting impression on me. Um, and I think it's a huge reason why I was so willing to come try 14, but then also why, um, I, I think I was so pleasantly surprised by 14 because in WoW, I got so into the PvP and I love the combat and just the whole fact that it was a whole virtual world, but... I think within an MMO of any kind, I never got into the community. I never got into the whole, you know, like, um, just like opening up and, and meeting people virtually. I, I played with friends from like IRL, right? So now with 14, this is the first time where I've actually sort of explored the idea of like what the community is. Plus for, uh, 14's got like housing and G pose and the glams and the the bard concerts and all this stuff. And it's just like, it just completely blew open the doors for me. And I wanted to contribute to that. So that leads me actually, um, I think quite nicely into the idea of, so when I first got my apartment, let me show this. The very first thing, it, uh, the very first thing I built, let me see if this works, was this. Okay, can everyone see that? It's uh, right there overlaid on the gameplay. So, and you can see, I think, my mouse there. Cool. So, um, so this is actually what I just, I posted this image for the very first time when, when we kickstarted the um, FFXIV first build hashtag, which for anyone who is not aware, so on, four, uh, on the 14, or like the, on Twitter, with regard to housing, there's all these typical hashtags like uh, XIV14, FF14 housing, 14 housing, this is Japanese um, for 14 housing. Um, but then this hashtag that uh, we've been work trying to build out 
um, FFXIV first build is really where people can showcase the very first things that they built or build in 14. So for anyone there who anyone who listens to this and is starting out in their housing thing and build something for the first time, post your first build on Twitter and then tag tag it with that hashtag and then give a little story of like what was going on in your brain or what led you to that because we want to create like a space where people understand how people get their start in their creative work because it's so it can be super crazy and daunting to see everybody's 20th hundredth build or whatever and get really bogged down by that you know um so i you can do this retroactively it does not need to be posted only right as you finish it so like a ton of us have posted retroactively you know me ashen Synth, uh like um you know i think oat uh oat milk um yeah like i mean just a, a whole bunch of people who have are i think most people only see our recent builds but um so anyway so so to say though that um this was my very first thing that i ever made in 14. uh because i think so one of the things that personally i always like to do whenever i start a creative project is i usually try to google or pinterest um a little bit of reference material not so much uh because i'm looking for anything specific but just because over the years, I've become very aware that, you know, you don't know what you don't know, but often the internet knows what you don't know. And so you can really jumpstart a lot of your learning by simply taking a quick look at what other people have created with this just to understand what's possible, right? But there's like, this is like a double-edged sword, right? So I think this, this, this happens in tandem, right? Is I get my apartment, I look this up, and I look up 14 housing, which leads me into my first build that inspired me, which is as as I was looking into this, this is again at the beginning or sort of like middle of 2020. And the article that pops up that is trending with regard to like when I say 14 housing builds or something like that, I forget exactly what the term I Googled is, but the build that came up um, was the infamous, I think for many people now, uh, Nora Rappi, um, Doman Dogwood Town, which I think at this point, most people are aware of this build, but if you're not, this build is incredible and it is still incredible to this day. To be honest, I've never seen anything that, that touches this in terms of creating a fully fleshed out townscape. Um, I like, there's not to say that there aren't beautiful townscape builds, but this thing still completely blows me away every time I look at it. Um, you know, it does, yeah, it, it is an absolute masterpiece, in my opinion. So, again, though, double-edged sword, right? So you can see, you could see this build. And let me click into this a little bit so you can see a little bit better image. Um, okay, so, you, I mean, you could see something like this and go, oh my god. I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. Here I am like trying to put a couch in the corner and like I have no idea what the heck I'm doing um, and get really discouraged and say I can't do this. Or you could take it the other direction, which is, oh, wow. OK. I like I, I saw people I, I see these items and I was kind of thinking like, oh, how can I make like a cute little kitchen or like a little you know, arrange my couches in a nice way? Oh, wow. OK. Or there is something else going on here, right? There is more possibility, right? There is a lot more creative freedom here somehow. And I don't know how, how he's doing this, but I want to learn, right? And I think that in my story, this is so important that I happen to stumble on this because it went from, oh, it's kind of cute that I can get an apartment to, whoa, I think I can make not anything per se, but like, wow, this really has a ton of potential, right? Like the, um, you know, I already experienced like running around within the game and just like meeting meeting people and, and how cool it was to just hang out even in like Limsa and watch people perform as bards or something. But then seeing this, I was like, wait, 
Someone made this, made this, not the game developer. Some person made this town. Now I'm imagining people hanging out in this town, performing in this town, right? And what could I make? What kind of town, what kind of venue, what kind of creative gathering spaces could I make? And I think, um, yeah, just so just seeing this, you know, the scale of this place. was really, really pivotal um, in, in creating this initial, um, th what I thought of, right? So so that's where I go back to this, this, the very first thing I made. The first, my first thought was that I think I had um, sort of just more hung out and watched sunsets and stuff in game, like up to this point. And so there was like this idea of like, oh, I really like how relaxing 14 is, you know? So I, um, so I really, I at first wanted the, I, I think I latched onto this idea of like, I want to create this like super Zen out like bathhouse space. And that's what I was going for here is I started experimenting with stuff and I was just, um, it's, it's really interesting to try when I, when I recall it, when I recall first building in 14, I don't know if you guys can relate to this. L let me know if you can, but like, there's a certain feeling that came with like putting my first items down and being like whoa i i made this and now i'm walking around in virtual space in this little micro scenario that i built mind you again this is like there's nothing going on here for the most part it's like a couple lofts put on the ground or like you know just like a couple couches and stuff and like that kind of thing but like it's it's interesting because that feeling kind of goes away as you get used to it but i just remember it's like an almost like a nostalgic thing. I don't know. I, I can recall thinking, like seeing this photo, I can recall this very specific kind of vibe or feeling that I remember just getting so lit up by like, wow, this is a cool, this is a cool vibe, you know, that's going on here. Like, and like, I can't wait to create something that then I get to have other people come into. Can you guys relate to that? Like, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like when you first started housing, do you remember that? Do you guys remember what it felt like to start building in 14? I'm kind of curious to hear like what, what your guys' experience with that first building. And I don't necessarily even mean the final product of like your first build, but just like what it felt like when you first started experimenting and creating and like seeing something that was in your brain come to life in the game, you know? You know, like nervous says Nimbus. Yeah, like what if you mess something up or if it doesn't work out or like you can't come up with like, you know, the right thing. Um, I, I guess, yeah, ner when you say nervous Nimbus, are you talking about like not sure if you can convey which is in your brain like what would make you nervous about that are people going to judge what you build poorly or something clips is saying like that this is the feeling they get with g pose yeah i could see that totally yeah like the first couple times you sh you create your g pose photos and you're sharing it with people and like that feeling of like oh man like uh, there's so much possibility here but like just the ability to take like you, you get used to watching your character run around, but then you see them smiling and looking all artsy or something, you know? And you're like, whoa, wait, that's like, damn, if there was like an Eorzea magazine, like that could go on the cover, you know? <laughs> and like, imagine giving other people that feeling of like seeing their character in a new light or like seeing them in this heroic glammed up state or whatever it may be, you know? Um, and yeah, so like, Let's see what Liara is saying. Uh, yes, first thing I did was craft some ma mason work stoves and place them in my first apartment back to back to create a two sided fireplace. I envisioned it before I was even able to buy an apartment. So to see it in my apartment was incredible. Yeah, right? Like you, you have this picture in your brain and you start, then you start going like, oh my God, wait, like, like this was, this was, this was intangible in my brain and now it is physically out here and I can run around it and heck, I can bring my friends in the game to this spot and they can see this thing. 
that exists and we can interact with it, right? Like it's just yeah, and I think I think that's why for for me personally, I think even right from the get-go, I was always about ven like creating some kind of a public venue space. Like I never not never. I have ideas for like personal apartments and stuff, but I think for me it was always about like I really love this idea that I'm in an MMO, there's thousands of people here, and there's the potential for people to interact with something that I made. Like I'm going to I'm going to contribute a piece of world to this game world, you know? Um and so that's where like I got into this idea of okay, I'm gonna create like this like as best I can, I'm gonna create a bathhouse and I want it to be a communal space. So like there's a centralized bath and then there's like this was gonna become seating area around here, you know, with some uh, cushions and stuff. And I wanted like to make a little entryway here. Um, I'm, it's not shown in this photo, but like I had started building out some like Hingen sideboards and putting little like, you know, entryway. And I even had a little um, lofted area right above the door because I think in first at first I was thinking like, oh, so it's like I created a bathhouse in my apartment, but I would still need a place to sleep as a warrior of light. So I was going to put like a little bit of a lofted bed area above the door. Um, and like, man, I was so happy, like getting the lanterns to float like that, you know, just like float in place, getting the um, getting like the the wooden lofts to float below the uh, the wood line along the wall because like place escaping stuff. Right. So like basic glitching and things. And like, I was just so over the moon about this. And I realized though that I think uh, I, the reality of the situation is bathhouses in a RP standpoint, if you open it to the public, I think everyone can complete, complete that thought, right? Like it, it kind of, if you don't police it maybe, or if, you know, if it's not presented in the right way, it could get taken in the wrong context. Um, so like i think that that to me was i wanted whatever i created to be kind of like in my brain i thought uh i will admit this is something that is even translated to some of the m more recent builds is that like i i feel like i i keep wanting to create this space where you feel compelled to come hang out um because it's just that good or something right like it's just this i love this space i just want to come hang out here and i don't need to be there all the time policing it or um you know constantly like staffing it with rp people or something so the idea would be that this thing would be a, a space that people would just start coming in to be like oh yeah like hard day out you know uh, the working and f killing things and stuff i want to just like have a place to go chill out um so they'd come back to this this house um but ultimately i decided okay this isn't really i don't think i can make this quite what i want it to without a lot more effort and 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 policing it a bit potentially um, so I pivoted directions, um, and then I ended up making this, uh, micro, well, actually, before I ended up, it ended up becoming this, Micro Brew and Tavern, which is the very first build that I would say I actually completed, completed. But first, um, within just the actual bathhouse, um, I started to explore this idea of, um, oh, I had no clips. Oh, I see. Also, you said you posted pics in Discord. Thank you very much for posting those clips. I'll see you. I'll see you around. Uh, and so I, I had this, um, I had the bathhouse thing, and then I started trying to add, like, what else could this be to make it much more of a public venue? So taking out, I told you I said I had, like, the bed above the door. So then... This is where I think Nora's, Nora's stuff comes in, right? So I kind of experimented with basic glitches and just kind of looking up what, what you could do. But then when I started thinking like, okay, I, th I think I can dress this up more. And so then I started looking at like, what are people doing in terms of layering? Because I saw, I mean, you know, this Nora thing, right? Like this whole crazy layered masterpiece. <laughs> um, and I started like, dissecting what is he doing here like what is happening here you know um okay so he's using things like i see him using wooden steps and stuff as awnings i see him using uh these um altars right as like also like roofing and stuff layering those with the greenery the wall planters okay he's hanging lights on the sides of these 
right? So you must be floating those up there somehow. You know, just a lot of like, how is this layered? How is this, how is he creating the illusion of a lot of these spaces, right? And then I started thinking the same thing. And so I started experimenting a lot with layering. And so that's when I came up with this. Um, and I think this was the first piece of housing where I really started like being like, well, okay, I think I'm onto something here. Like, and mind you, I didn't just like pop this out like, like it was nothing. I like experimented with tons of variations of this and positions and how to like get this to layer. So like trying to, you know, use this trim, right? Um, the, the, the Hingian wall, but only using the trim part and not the rest of the wall. Then use, figuring out to use the beds as like the ceiling here. And then figuring out how to hang, like how to, how to frame the beds to hide the fact that they're beds. You know, and by the way, this is, I don't even have any idea that bed meta was even a thing at this point. I had not, I don't think at this point I'd really discovered HGX IV even. Um, but I just had seen like Nora builds and I had seen, I think maybe a bit of housing snap or something. Um, and, and so I came up with this concept, which if you guys know my backstage theater, you might start to see how these things that I was experimenting with very early on eventually became like these initial observations I made from Nora's stuff, as well as this eventually becomes the backyard theater that I created. Um, and I can show that really quick, I think. Where is that build? Uh, and I, I think that's a big thing is so much of... Uh, early on all this stuff influenced has influenced like everything else that's come after which i mean i guess that's that's how creative work goes right um so let's see where is it where is it where is it ah here it is okay so Right, so when I eventually, eventually, observing Nora's stuff, playing around with all this stuff, I actually created where the where the uh, hot tub is in this apartment. I started experimenting with what else could be back here, and it started evolving away from like, okay, what if I had multiple hot tubs? No, it's not going to work. Eventually, there became like a stage back here, and the stage, actually, I I didn't end up using this build because. I couldn't come. I couldn't figure out how to complete the look. I ran out of items. Basically, I would. I didn't budget my slots. I didn't. I didn't know enough to like budget my slots a little bit better. I was doing too many things. Eventually, though, I realized what I wanted to do with this, and that's the stage that you actually see. This build that you guys may recognize as a more recent build of mine. This whole stage setup thing is basically me finally taking all those pieces that I first discovered like really early on and putting them actually with my more like updated knowledge um, into practice. And so I made it more efficient and I made it cleaner and I made it, you know, more like lit much better and more elegantly, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it started off as those early experiments and being inspired by Nora's stuff. So there's the stairs right there, like this little, using the stairs as the rafters. That's a direct, a di uh, I don't even wanna say it's a tribute, like I got that idea from Nora um, very early on, right here, there it is. There's the stairs, there's the awning thing, right? Um, and, and even the using of the altars here as sort of like roof tilings and stuff became, the basis for this idea that eventually led me to create these roofing tiles. I just, I layered mine differently than his, but like just the concept of having those was something I always wanted to utilize. And I was finally able to, again, put more of my updated knowledge post Ichi, post, you know, um, building a couple initial things, post Japanese temple um, knowledge and, and, and implement them. And so now, they exist as you see them in the FC house, which is right behind me. Um, yeah, so I think 
<laughs> man, we're like almost an hour into this and like I've only talked about one uh, inspiration build. This is why I'm like, I feel like this could be like a six hour thing. Um, it's not going to be today, but like, I feel like there is a, there's definitely a 2.0 of this that I will need to do. I, do would, are you guys interested in hearing like, like even more about this kind of stuff? Uh, you know, has this been entertaining so far? Um, I just want to make sure that like, it's not like a snooze fest or anything. Um, if people like want to hear more about this kind of stuff, uh, in depth or even just like, I don't know, I guess like a some more scripted, you know, s succinct version somewhere sometime that would take a lot more to produce, but like, you know, you could cut it down a little bit. Um, so. Okay, cool. As long as, as long as people are enjoying, enjoying it. So this version's a little off the cuff. If anything, it's a test run for 2.0 and other variations of this that could come in the future. Um, so let's see here. Oh, I see. So yeah, Nimbus was saying earlier too, like that um, they have a hard time visualizing stuff in their head. You know, interestingly, I feel like so. Uh, I part of the reason why I started the whole like first build thing, um, and, and even just like wanting to talk about this, I think I might even dedicate a whole video about this. Um, but like the idea of being kind to yourself when you when you're designing to is. This is like 14 and housing in here is far from my first like creative endeavor, especially in terms of like 3D spatial stuff. So I think when I was a kid, I did a lot of Lego building. And I'll be honest, I honestly think that me building with Lego so much when I was a kid is why it got ingrained in my brain to imagine things 3D spatially. Um, so like, I mean, you know, and then I'm also a graphic designer in, in real life. Um, as well as, you know, I've done tons of like art and clay and stuff like throughout childhood and everything. So like a lot of those things get sampled into housing. I'm not just coming in blind doing creative work here, um, which I think is something that sometimes people, you know, don't always appreciate is like how many, not just how, how many, not just how many housing hours someone has put in and that you're seeing the result of with their creation but how many like hundreds of hours of art in general or like 3d interior design or even like lego building 3d design as a kid like how many hundreds of hours i've also clocked in at that or someone else might have clocked in right um so um but the part of it is don't be discouraged and part of it is finding your own way i visualize things in my brain in a way but like i mean if you can't visualize it sketch it out you know there's people who have um created flooring maps for housing so you could even like plan out your your layout that way so i think i actually have that in the resources section of my discord um if you go look in the resources i have a, a link to someone who had done some flooring plans for ha different housing sizes so you could you could use that that might be a good tool to use um but part of it too is like the nice thing the beautiful thing about building in 3D virtual space in like 14, for example, is there's no cost to putting the couch down and then taking it away, right? Like in real life, that's labor cost, right? In real life, you build the ceiling and you don't like it, you can't just rip it down without like costing hundreds of thousands of dollars or something, right? But in a game, yeah, just slap that roof on and like if you don't like it, just rip it down and put it again, right? Who cares, right? I mean, sometimes if you need to, if anything, do it in a game like this and in a space like this where there is low stakes when you're not before you're getting commissioned or whatever like that and like over time you'll start to build up your little mental library of like patterns that work and you know you'll you'll understand the space that is or the slots and the space that's required to create those kinds of patterns right so um so much of it is just like experimenting and trial and error and everything um so yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully, maybe that that helps or gives a couple ideas of like where you can go from there. And I'll be honest too, you know, sometimes. So here, here's I guess here's now phase two of building, right? Which is so as I go from trying out the bathhousey thing, right? I realize it's not becoming what I want it to be, but I still want to create a public venue. 
Um, so then what I pivot to is this idea of like, I wonder if I could make a bar. And this gets into, because I saw Nora's original stuff, I actually um, really, really, I got into, I looked at his website. And uh, so Nora has a website that documents all of his stuff. Uh, by the way, uh, in case I didn't say this earlier, I think I didn't, but I am going to link to all of these tweets and everything in the sort of quote unquote show notes references section when this VOD goes up on YouTube. So I'll be putting this VOD up on YouTube and I'll link to everything that I'm talking about so you can see stuff there if you haven't already figured it out where it is. Um, just because I think it's going to get too crazy if I'm constantly just throwing out all these links. Um, although I guess like even for right now, here, here's the Dome in Dogwood Town. This is the one I'm talking about right now, this Norikiba Dome in Dogwood Town build that we're currently looking at. There's the link for that. And here is the link to that my fir the first build that I did. In case you're curious to see that thread, this is what I'm talking about right now. So basically, I pivot eventually from the the bathhouse idea to something that I think I can actually I I, I think I can do better, and so I, I end up with this. I end up with this. I called it a microbrew and tap room. And really, it's a combination of two things happening. One is I went out in real life and touched some grass. And I also went out to grab some drinks with some friends at some downtown bars. And one of them had this humongous bar wall. Uh, and this was as, as I was kind of trying to figure out what I was going to do next. And I remember looking through Nora's website and just seeing all of his like insane amount of creativity on this dude's website. Uh, you know what? Let me let me even just go to this right now. Like, uh, it is kind of crazy how inventive this guy is. Um, so like, one moment. Huh, that's weird. Why did that thing show up? But, um, yeah, so here we go, right? Nora's website. And he has housing. Let me, let me link this. There we go. Nora's website. He has a catalog of all his stuff. I think right as I joined, it'd be like in the 2019 range. It's kind of crazy, actually, if you died, if you look through his stuff, even from like 2017 and 2018, and you look at what people are doing now and some of the builds that have trended recently, like, for example, sky, like certain like skylines and stuff or like um, certain uh, dioramas or townscapes and stuff. And here you look and you're like, dude, this guy was doing this in 2017. Like he and it's kind of nuts um, to think some of these things um, that he was building. Like, I mean, look, look at this. Look at this stuff. Right. Like. Uh. Again, like this, 2017, right? <laughs> um, it, and this like holds up to like some of the best builds today, right? Um, let me see. So I remember seeing like I was looking at like this, this, like this thing of his. And just seeing all of these really cool um, ideas that he was doing here. Right? So like the idea of using like multiple pillows and stuff to create a pattern on the floor. Like, I mean, there he's doing it right here, you know? And I feel like recently some of these things have like trended. Uh, but he did it in 2017. Uh, absolutely. I'm not saying like... Again, it's it's totally fine that like I mean a lot of people come to the same conclusions with ideas, but it's just 
there is an insane amount of creative ideas that even right now, if you go to Nora's website and just look through all of his builds and you'll find the builds that resonate with you, like it'll be pretty obvious to you which ones you want to click on and check out. Just take a moment and try to look through and identify what is happening in a lot of the builds that he's doing. And I guarantee you, you will have ideas. 100%. I guarantee you, you will have some ideas spark in your brain and you'll think, oh my God, that's an amazing combination. Or like, whoa, I never thought to put this with that. Or, you know, how is he creating this effect? Um, but the big one for me that led me to the bar, in addition to the fact that um, the fact that I went in real life to the bar was that he did, let me get this. Um, he did this British pub. And now at this point, I had started listening to HGXIV's podcast. And at some point, one of these the episodes that I first clicked on for their HGXIV podcast, which again, shout out to HGXIV and all the amazing things they're doing. Um, they just they have created so much wonderful content for for the housing community. And on their podcast, they were talking, I think it was Div who said some, who, maybe it was Div who brought it up. I don't know. They are all kind of gushing about it, but that Nora did this British pub and they were talking about how realistic it felt to be there and to look at it. And I got to agree. I remember looking at this too. And it was, I mean, so far there's Japanese stuff that exists in the game. Um, and I thought, I mean, in a way it makes sense that a lot of the items could be used to make Japanese stuff. But then to see this and to be like, okay, there's this, there's a street, there's an alleyway going on here with counters, like with windows going on. Oh my God, he's only using part of the the adventurer um, guild, uh, the paperwork here, creating these like little stalls that looks into a room. And the big one was like, they were talking about how he used the gem scopes as beer pulls, like the beer taps. And just like how immersive this whole scenario was that this that Nora built out here, right? Like here we go, seating, like an entry, you know. Um, and this was once again like a oh wow, I like the the um, the range of stuff that you could do in the game. Once again, kind of my my mind like expanding, like whoa wow. Uh, that's like there is no i guess i guess maybe you could argue that some of this is like a lot of like maybe gridanian kind of woodwork and stuff but like looking at this pub this does not look like it belongs in the game this looks like it belongs in england you know um and that's something that really struck me as being like oh i don't have to model stuff so much that's like based off of the game game world like i think the bathhouse i was kind of going for was like like Ghibli, but kind of clearly Hingen, you know, Shirogane kind of looking stuff. Um, but then this like was like, oh, right, like bringing real life into this, you know? And um, oh, hey, by the way, Rothcast. Hello, Roth. Um, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it, man. I think it's like twice in like in two weeks back to back that you've made it. Glad to have you here, man. Um, and oh i've seen people yeah like liara made a jp alt specifically to visit nora's builds good i i highly recommend it um if, if people want to um yeah make make alts and stuff and go check out nora's builds or just the, J, the a lot of the stuff the jp people are doing the japanese uh server data centers are doing some absolutely just beautiful phenomenal work over there um not just from nora but from so many designers i could probably do a whole video on just stuff the Japanese folks are doing um, and how cool that stuff is um, <laughs> like researching for this video like probably you can even hear it as I'm talking to you but like there's just like I talk about one thing and I it like re-sparks me thinking about like all of these other things and and then I'll like that was like me research trying to like gather my thoughts about this this particular stream was like a freaking like tidal wave of stuff because i was like oh i'll talk about like this build this build and this but i think so so i was like let me get some information about that let me get the links for those and just like linking to one of those was like link 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 and i just yeah it, there's a lot um so anyway the, the the pub here though this 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 having this british pub 
uh, really like got me got more the idea of like okay here's another that's a that's a really good that's a really cool idea is the idea of creating like a a bar in an apartment and I think I can create something like this in an apartment uh, without having to have a big house and um, I think digesting a lot of what he was doing here was a lot of what I experimented with then um, here you know um, with trying to create like a a sort of modern looking bar and and like you know even like down to like creating booths and creating like more of a seating area a casual a casual spot that people could come hang out and um i remember thinking like seeing that actually that this the british pub that nora made and then combining that with the fact of like you know the stuff i'd seen in real life and my thought was basically you know what would be really cool with the seating area and kind of the vibe of this bar is like I want it to be like the bar from f or the the coffee shop from Friends or the bar from How I Met Your Mother. Because in, in that, it was like this cute little sort of you know divey bar or coffee shop, you know, and that it would be like a place that people build their storyline in, right? Like they come and they just like this becomes like our booth. Right, I think um, I think that's like I, I I don't know I don't know I'll admit I haven't actually uh, watched Friends all the way through I've seen many 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 clips but I never like watched start to finish um, so I'm not a super Friends expert I did watch How Much Your Mother all the way through but like I know enough about both of those that I know that like they kind of have like for Friends it's their couch right the, the little like you know couch area with a little table in front of them that they sit at and then for How Much Your Mother there's like the booth that or the you know the table or the booth area that they always sit in and there's sort of this aspect of that they go there every day after they do their adventures or whatever they're doing and it's either where they start their their adventure or where they end their adventure a lot of the times and i really wanted that idea like love that idea and that's really where i was going with a lot of this um you know when i was when i was building this whole setup was trying to capture something like that that people would want to come to and here we go with like my variation on like taking the bar, like Nora used the gem scopes. Um, oh, where is it? Here we go, right? He used these gem scopes and stuff. And I tried using the gem scopes and it didn't quite work out the way I felt like I wanted to, but then I came up with my own pattern where I used the ale taps. And um, I had gone to a different bar, which was like those, those bars where you pour your own beer and there's just like a bajillion taps along the walls and you get to just have like a, it's like a wristband, right? And you like scan it and you just pour as much as you want. And you just pay at the end. Uh, and yeah, that's like where I got the idea to do like this. And so this was like one of the biggest things I was really proud of early on in terms of also layering was like just figuring out the exact position I wanted the ale taps to poke through so you could still get the little hexagon thing popping through the wall. So they look like they're attached to this metal plating and then hiding like 99% of the cabinet that has the plating here just so you can get the metal plate um, that, the, that the ale taps could be attached to. So they're not just like sitting on the counter. Cause I kind of like this idea of getting them flush into the wall. And it's like a little detail that probably most people would like, don't even notice or care about that much, but like so proud. I was very, very proud of this combination and then getting like a little sink area so that if the you know beer is falling, it has somewhere to get caught and like drain away. Um, yeah, so I feel like these, this is this helped really launch me creating this as my first build and getting this out the door. Um, yeah, look, let me there you go. Uh, November twenty eighth, twenty twenty. Oh, look at this! My my adorable ten likes of my very first build here. Um, but you know, everyone's gonna start somewhere, and uh, like. It didn't end up. Funny anecdote about that is I I I mentioned before that I thought I could build a build, and then you'd just be so damn good that you'd just be, feel compelled to go there. Like people would just build it and they will come, kind of thing. Um, and then I was I think advised like, okay, you kind of need to like get people to know it exists, right? So like put a party finder out, and I did. And I was expecting people to just kind of come and I was just going to be like, yeah, like just like sit wherever and just like hang out and like you'll just kind of like make your own RP or something. 
um you know i'll chat with you like casually outside of like an rp context um but that was not how that unfolded it ended up being understandably in hindsight that a bunch of people wanted to rp in a bar and so they they showed up at the bar and they're like speaking to me in rp talk and i was like ah uh, okay you know i kind of just was like oh crap like I don't have like an RP bartender here or something like that. So I RP bartended on the fly that night. Roth was Roth was actually there. Roth, if you're still here in the chat, um, but like uh, this was like by the time I finished this apartment, I actually had already gotten so deep into housing that I had gotten a small house because of Housing Savage. Uh, there were some wards that got released in like late 2020, and I was lucky enough to swoop up a Shiragane small in that ward, which ended up being right next to Roth's giant Shiragane castle, and thus m a few months later, Ichi is born. Um, but at the time when I was building like this bar, um, I had never completed a build yet, like fully completed, and this was the first thing that I really completed. And I invited Roth and Azzy over, because um, I was quickly making friends with them. And so they were actually there and witnessed this initial opening of this bar and my very first time role-playing um, as an RP bartender. Um, I don't know, I think I did a pretty decent job, but I realized it wasn't for me. Like, I realized I couldn't... It was fun, but I didn't think that it was something that I would want to do all the time, you know, sustainably, so... Um, so the bar is actually, this This bar still exists, it's still at this address, it still is available for anybody who wants to go take a look at that. Um, but um, I haven't really done anything with it because it kind of, I realized it wasn't, it wasn't going to become what I thought it was. And I thought I could do something different. Um, so then I kind of, I guess, left it. But this is so this I think is where now the floodgates start opening in terms of a lot of builds start popping into um, like a lot of builds that inspired Ichi, inspired eventually prominence, inspired the Japanese temple that I initially made. Um, I started experimenting with. Uh, in, in the house that I got. So I, I got the small I mentioned, right? And suddenly I had double the slots from an apartment. <laughs> and uh, and I had been listening to a lot of HGXIV podcasts as I was building this first initial bar. And then as I started experimenting in the house now with trying to build what I thought was going to be like my masterpiece. Because like at the time I thought like, man, like, okay, I think I know enough now. And like... I think I'm just gonna, I need to, I need to make a build that's just gonna rock the housing world. And I wanted to just really make this, like, I was like, I failed at it with the bathhouse. I failed at it with this bar. I'm gonna make a venue-y RP kind of like space. That's just, again, like so cool that you, you feel compelled to come there. And at first, I wish I had, I, I need to find the photos of this. I have some screenshots of me building like almost everything that I've done. Um, but I had, so I had this, I, I brought back the idea of creating like a restaurant Japanese bar thing in my house. And I started working on that as I was also just digesting like a ton of like HGXIV and, um, and everything like that. And, uh, that ended up becoming the, let me see, the, the Japanese temple. That I finished, which is actually unfortunately torn down now because I had to make way for, um, well, prominence became, uh, I, I got the large for prominence and that's where that came. But I spent a really, really long time building this Japanese temple after I finished that micro brew. And this is actually the build that I think let Roth know that I was at a, like, that uh, this is the reason I was given the shot to build Ichi was because I built this and I invited him and some other people over when I first finished it. But um, 
I think not many people even know about this build of mine because it was so early on, but like, so I built this in, um, I, I posted this, I guess, in January 2021. Um, and this is sort of very shortly after this is when I was given the chance to build Ichi. And so because I was doing like looking at HGXIV and, and what they were doing, I did bed meta here. So for the first time now, I have like bed meta going on. I have a lot more layering and more specific lighting going on. Um, I I use tricks like hiding NPCs in the floor to keep these uh, doors and stuff held open. Right, so like here in the front of the temple, like there's NPC hidden in the floor. So that way these doors are all staying open. Here's the beds and stuff, the little like that, that design pattern that I created very early on in my apartment coming back. Um, this part, I was really proud of how this turned out was I spent so long trying to figure out how to light this tree and how to get this little tiny tuft of greenery to pop out of the floor and be completely invisible, like everything else to be completely invisible here. So I really wish I had done a walkthrough video of this before I had to destroy it, but I didn't have the uh, foresight to do that. But you walk into the build and you're greeted by this tree. And I really spent a ton of time trying to create this very big impact point where you walk in and you see this tree standing there before you. And it's like a very Zen temple kind of thing going on. And I really like, I spent so long just trying to figure out how, this is before we have the ponds, mind you, right? So it's like nowadays people have multiple types of greenery and stuff that you can pop little bits out here. This is like the original brick indoor pond, the little square one. And there's a tiny bit of the tuft of grass that pops up the top. And I had to figure out a way to get that to, I guess, envelop the bottom of this tree in a way that felt really natural. Cause I didn't like the way that plantar partitions and stuff looked with this particular combo. Um, and I spent so long just figuring out how to get the greenery to look the way it would be, but then be flush, like to hide the rest of the pond, it's just like floating stuff up from the bottom, but then still like floating the right things up from the bottom so I could still build the temple below, figuring out how this light would go. So much of that comes from endlessly looking at HGXIV videos. And I think actually in particular, when I was building this, the HTXIV video at the time was based uh, was based when they were uh, was being filmed in this recent build at the time it was recent um, by Ashen, and it was this build of hers. So this is by Ashen Bride. Uh, if it loads here, <laughs> and this is a like, I guess, Asian bathhouse, right? So the, and this, I think this build really left a lasting impression on me in terms of it. This was the, for me, this was the first modern quote unquote build that I had seen that really felt like it was going for the really like trying to capture real life modern. And I remember being really struck by just the color palette in here and the way that she layered, like in this case, rectangular partitions with, I think it's the walnut wall um, and just only showing little, a little bit of it and like creating like the bath tiles here. And I remember like, I mean, this is also coming out of me trying to build the bathhouse thing. And I was like, oh my God, did this, you know, this bl completely blows what I was doing out of the water. Um, Seeing like this, this is, I think this was the first shot. The opening shot of that stream was this. I'm just like, whoa, look at this open window thing going on. Like hanging the lights with the, making the pendant lights, right? Um, using uh, like a custom ceiling here. Just, just all the layering that's going on here. I think uh, this too, right? Like using here the rectangular partitions. Again, with sort of like the open window thing going on, right? Giving like a, a bed frame using some Hingen 
um, bookshelves and cabinets and stuff like man like it i think while it didn't lead me to just going full-on modern i was thinking very much in the vein of like minimalist japanese build or something um when i first came to my house and actually i was originally going for more minimalist japanese bar but then eventually just the ideas that i had um when i was building where did it go uh losing all the tabs yeah so when i was doing this right it ended up becoming this much more like feudal looking japanese temple because the one of the first things i figured out downstairs was was well the tree upstairs and then also the i think it was one of those by accident things like tabbing through the housing menu and i discovered how cool the this this samurai um armor could look if you lit it properly and I created the light box, basically, of this this concept of the light box here. And then this actually dictated the rest of the build and ended up kind of evolving into this more like feudal looking Japanese temple versus a modern take. Um, but I think still just the idea of all the custom ceiling, you know, and creating so much layering and stuff was a lot inspired by me looking at... Um, you know, Ashen's work on, on HGXIV, Synth's work on HGXIV, Dividus, Rhapsody. Um, I think those were, those were all the main hosts at the time. And, and just being like, wow, okay. They were not only showing beautiful examples that they were themselves doing, but they were teaching you how to do it. Because that was something from Nora's build. It's all in Japanese uh, for the most part. So I could visually try to break it apart. But of course, some of the things of like, how do you float stuff? Right, like I didn't understand, um, right? Like I didn't understand how he was achieving some of these things, uh, or like some of the items and stuff. But it was nice because HGXIV, the podcast, was all in English, so I could actually understand everything they were saying, and they were breaking down, you know, how to create a lot of these things, um, and it was just exposing me to different ideas. Nimbus is saying these pictures literally look drawn. Yeah, they're stunning, right? I mean, it's gorgeous. Um, here's another one too. So again, I think uh, this this maybe has like subtle implications in some of my other builds, but I think the another this is here is another very um, an, another very like eye opening build that I stumbled upon very early on when I was housing. Oops, uh, that did not go. There we go. I think that'll go. So there's this other build that at the time was trending. So at the same time, I think roughly that Nora's thing popped up in my life. Uh, this was actually, I think the first, this might even be how I found HGXIV, to be honest. Um, but I think this build was trending at the time too. This is about right, July 20, 2020. Yes, this is about when I was getting into housing and stuff. I think I got into June 2020. So um, shortly after, the Ashen completed this and posted this build. And this was another example of just like, wow, what is going on here? Like, yet again, similar to Nora's Japanese town. This was another like, wait, what? Like, what is, what on earth is happening in this creation, right? And again, I think we have we have a ton more resources now. Like a lot of people have broken down how to build cabinets, how to build like probably a lot of it is HGXIV, but like, you know, so a lot of it is Ashen herself telling people how she's done a lot of this stuff. But like at the time, there weren't a lot of resources telling you how to do this. So you just see this photo and you just think like, what the heck is this? Like, how did you do this? Right. I mean, this doesn't look like 14. Um. Wait, let me expand this flip. I can, there we go. Give you a little more view of this. Like, look at this thing, right? Like this, she says herself, um, I had a commission and the owner wanted futuristic and modern. I looked at a lot of Star Citizen and Blade Runner concepts for this inspiration. And I'm a big fan of the aesthetic of both Star Citizen and Blade Runner. So wonderful references to pull from Ashen. Um, but yeah, like modern cabinets, you know, a modern looking minimalist bed, 
this uh, using multiple wooden steps to create like a plank walkway thing. The recessed TV with even like using the aquarium for the glass reflection on it. Um, you know, minimalist art kind of with just like this little multiple uh, bits of the oriental partition hanging up at different levels and putting the coral. Here, let me scroll through this a bit, right? This kitchen, look at this thing, right? Like modern art on the wall here. You know, uh, look at, I, I still consider this an absolute masterpiece as well, because between this one and the Nora one, I think both of these are probably two of the biggest things that really cued me into like, wow, this is, there is so much possibility here that I am not aware of, or I was not aware of until now. Right? Look at that reflection on the TV. <laughs> you know, like, holy crap, that's amazing, right? Um, there's just so much little subtle things. Putting couches here to create the bent sofa. Um, I think this is the, what is it, the Oasis counter, which is the bottom, you know? So that's not, that's not like 500 items used to create this thing, right? That's like five or six, maybe, um, to create this gorgeous, gorgeous pattern on the top of the ceiling. And, um, yeah, I think I've actually, stri I've never really done modern stuff, but I have, I've always had ideas and thought of trying a modern build. So maybe that'll be something we try in July. I have been thinking about what maybe we could do in July, which as I keep, as I keep talking here, Hey, if anybody has ideas of builds you want to see me do or concepts for a stream or something like that, that you guys would be interested in, uh, feel free to fire some of them out here in the chat. I'd be very curious to, um, Sample from your, you know, what you guys want to see me do and I'll, you, you know, either take it verbatim or deviate from that or create a variation on that or whatever. But um, I've been trying to think through what we're going to come do, you know, July, August and beyond and stuff. So if you got ideas, Rem saying, OMG, yes, that Ashen build made me explode internally as a modern editor. Yeah, right. Like between this build and uh, the oops, that's not it between that build and then me seeing the HGV XV podcast with this build, the, the bathhouse she did. It really was like, it, it just really, I think watching those builds and then made me really both want to learn the techniques, but then also um, really had me pushing myself when it came to me making this temple, you know, and, and trying to really make this thing sing. So I guess here, let me share a couple of little links here, right? So here's the temple build that I'm talking about. This is one of my very early builds. Um, and then let me share the link here to, to Ashen's. This is the Star Citizen apartment build. And then the second one here I'm gonna share is the link to the, uh, the bathhouse build. So Give those build, give some of these builds some love. And again, if if you're watching this in the future on YouTube or something, um, I then I will be putting the links to all of these builds down in the description, so you can always find the links to these um, all linked below. So that way you can go share share these builds, give them some more booster tweets, and and sh get, you know give some retweets, give some love, um, or even just share with your friends or something. Put them in your archive because. Uh, they still hold up today and they're they're stunning um so there yeah that that's i think this brings that brings us up to the point where i start building ichi so now you know i've just completed this this temple and to this day honestly i'm very proud of this temple i still really feel like i really pushed myself so much building this and just coming up with concepts for this uh and coming up with just like, you know, the details and stuff that I tried to create with like, you can't, these pictures are awful in, in a sense. Like I really should have done better with these, but like there's a lot of like little layering and, and structural things. If you, if you saw my most recent stream, I'll link to the card actually, if this is on YouTube, but um, the most recent VOD on my YouTube channel uh, where we did the mystery item build just, just last Wednesday where people sent mystery items to me and I built with them spontaneously on stream. Um, if you saw that and we ended up with the altar for that one, 
this is the altar. I, I was pulling partially concepts that I pulled from here. There's a little like using the uh, verdant partitions, uh, verdant, what is it? Counters, verdant shelf, verdant counters, flip backwards and then using just the posts to frame the altar. That's where I got that from, is from me pulling back through my catalog of design patterns from this temple build and, um, you know, calling back to that. So you could, I mean, you can, again, you can't, it, it's very poorly lit uh, in some sense, but it's sort of intentionally so you can see the lighting, but like there's a lot of little layery things going on here um, to try to frame this. This this little this little bit using the oriental tub here is like, you see this in Ichi as a design pattern. Using the beds for the bed meta, I mean, obviously is in Ichi as well. Using a whole raised floor in this temple is from, is translated into Ichi. Uh, creating patterns on the sides here using the paper partitions, also translated into Ichi. And so I think then that brings me to Ichi and the next few builds here uh, that really inspired me for that, which is, I think actually it's maybe... Okay, there's, there's two parts to this, right? So one is going to be first, during the HGXV podcast, um, Div, Div brought up, well, let me put it, to put this away for a moment. Um, it was brought up that Dividus had recently created this Garlean Ironworks build. And I've mentioned this before on, on I think, the Ichi and Prominence walkthrough video that I did. I'll link that as a card up above as well. Um, on future on, on this is on my YouTube VODs. So if, it's on, if you're on YouTube, it's linked in the cards. It just popped up. So basically, at the time though, um, Dividus had created this. So this is May fifteenth, twenty twenty, and I started doing housing June. So um, so he had done this a little while ago, but I was kind of going through the HGXAV catalog at the time. And they talked about this and they brought up the fact that Div built this Garlean Ironworks thing. And I went back and I was like, that's really interesting. I haven't seen anyone do at the time. I hadn't seen anyone do metal work yet. And they were talking about how Div, Div was pioneering this like concept of how to do metal work and stuff. And so I went hunting for this build and man, again, blown away. Like the concepts that he did in here with like creating the elevators, right? So this, there's like even tracks because this is like more of like a giant, like, you know, workstation door that would like uh, presumably have a, I don't know, a lift that actually brings stuff in and out of the base, right? Um, creating the little consoles, the computer consoles, which, so now, I mean, nowadays, I think many people have done things like Yana's space builds, Alora, or uh, yeah, Alora, who's, He's just saying Div is awesome. I, I mean, and I, I know why. I mean, because I think like Alora has done some a bunch of phenomenal space builds, and I'm gonna guess that some of your inspirations for those space builds were both Div and Yana, Yanaris, Yana Yanaris, because both of them I think have set, had had some phenomenal um, hand at pioneering some of the design patterns in terms of how to do metal work, how to make computer consoles, how to make, you know, uh, open space windows, how to make, you know, these kinds of patterns that create the more like sci-fi looking stuff. Not to say that you didn't also come up with many of the ideas on your own, Alora, but I'm, I'm wondering if those were some of maybe your inspirations. Because um, I know those, both Yana's and Div's builds, I think were um, some of the earliest ones that I personally was seeing people do that kind of aesthetic. And like in particular, the big one here is the elevator that he did here. And this is not a functional elevator. So this is just a static elevator creating the illusion, the look of an elevator. But this really struck me as like, whoa, that's so cool. You know, that's again, something I hadn't thought of doing and, and Div was showcasing here. And um, then this actually is where the elevator in Ichi comes from. Again, I, I think I, I hope 
No, I, I know I did. I directly talk about this every time I talk about Ichi, which is that the elevator in Ichi is not my concept. This is absolutely from this Magitech Maintenance and Repair Hanger by Div. Um, it is not one for one. I, I edited it a little bit to make it fit in Ichi's look a little bit more. But for the most part, it is Div's design and um, it works so perfectly there for the FC chamber um, to create the illusion of... Uh, in his case, he's creating the illusion of a hangar and a works metal ironworks workspace. But for Mia Ichi, it was helping to sell the believability that Ichi is very tall because you walk into the giant Shiragana castle walls and yet you are only able to access effectively the, the first floor and then the bottom floor. So what the heck was all that height when you first walked up to the building? And so this elevator... Um, really i think this elevator and pulling this into the ichi build and kind of my own thoughts about this as well as maybe hearing some thoughts about this in, on hgxiv really solidified this idea of that we are very limited in this game in terms of how much space we have to design in and so then the best solution to this a lot of the time is to sell the illusion that there is more space even though there actually isn't Right, so creating fake doors, fake elevators, fake stairwells that don't actually lead to anything, but it doesn't matter that they don't lead to anything because your brain can fill in the storyline there, right? It can, um, you know, it, it, your brain can figure out, okay, this must lead, it, it, in theory, would lead somewhere. I don't need to know where it leads though, but it completes the space. So instead of you always walking into a box, you think, I walk into one room of a much larger scenario. And I think your brain is surprisingly forgiving when it comes to stuff like that. And I think that that's incredibly cool to be able to help um, sell that to people that deliver that storyline. And so, yeah, that's, um, I think that's where this elevator comes in. And this then would be a natural place to then shout out to the second elevator build, which I think was a huge, big, like, leap for me uh, in terms of an aha moment. Um, now, this is not the first time I've s I saw a functional elevator concept. I think they talked about it at some HGSAV podcast episode, or I might have even just seen... Like, I know I had some friends who were showing me just how you could like, you know, move yourself around in a build based off certain little mechanisms. But this is the first time that I really saw this built, built out and, and both immersion standpoint as well as functionality. And that is with Ashen's industrial apartment or industrial suite as she calls it. So this is the industrial suite. She has actually even updated this since. Um, so once again, oh, let me uh, let me link this. So this is the, the thing I'm talking about. Oh, I uh, see. Laura says Yana, Cap oh yeah, Yana, Captain Gray, and Vanzel. Uh, Dibs is way more complicated. Can't layer like he can. Oh no, Laura. I think some of your stuff is is quite complex in layering and quite cool. So I mean. Uh, but it is true, Div is kind of like ridiculously good at layering and cluttering and creating multiple like layers of depth within his build. He is very, very, very good at that. Um, but yeah, all those designers you mentioned are phenomenal. Yana, Captain Grey, and Vanzel. Uh, definitely all, also all pioneering some phenomenal concepts and stuff. Highly recommend checking them out. And yeah, this, this build from Ashen, so this industrial apartment, but in particular, so there's this elevator that she did here. And the apartment itself is also beautiful as an apartment. But the big thing, you know, was that um, the elevator actually works. So you walk in, I don't know if this build is up anymore. It might not be. Um, but you walk in and this is where you load in at the door and it's a lobby and a, a, a lobby of a hotel or something. And then you 
right here, take a left, and there's this elevator. And you use the elevator and you warp up and you land in the apartment. And again, I had seen, I think, some very early attempts at this kind of thing, but this was the first time I'd seen it done this cleanly and this immersively, I want to say. Um, and so for any of you who know my work, then you'll probably know that this is where Prominence's elevator gets born, is I went to this build and I studied or I tried to figure out how she created this. And um, yeah, this is this is where I got the elevator mechanism in Prominence from. And this is, uh, I, I changed it and I tried to make sure that I didn't copy it one for one. You know, um, I wanted to make sure it was my own and that I wasn't just, you know, plagiarizing her work. Plus the aesthetic and stuff, you know, is different in Prominence than obviously what she did. Um, but I thought that is such a phenomenal concept. Um, and I think actually uh, a bunch of other uh, elevators and variations on this popped up since also to get people like, for example, to the void and that kind of thing. Um, but like the thing that I was so uh, impressed by with Ashen's one is too, is just how like some people just had the, the mechanism that fired you upward somewhere, but it wasn't really dressed up that maybe cleanly per se, but a the way that Ashen did it was beautiful. And it was so immersively storyline built where you walk in, you know, you have the whole lobby area, you go take the elevator up and you pop up and there is also an elevator behind you and that it, it never breaks from the, the immersion and the storyline of what's happening from the moment you walk in the build. And I loved that. And I really wanted to deliver, I, I, to, to, to make use of that when it came to prominence. Because at the time, I had not seen any club that, when I started building prominence, again, prominence took me six months to build. <laughs> so um, in the time between when I started building to when I actually debuted, I think, um, you know, by then actually several clubs had, had done elevators. Um, in some sense, but um, very early on at Prominence, this one of these ideas was was seeing this from Ashen and, um, and thinking, wow, that is that would be so cool to integrate that into a club scenario to to get people to disjoint a little bit for a split second when you take the elevator, it kind of disjoints you from like where you're spatial where you spatially are in the build. And that would allow people to reset their fr their frame of reference per se, and that way give them like almost a fresh mm, experience as they walked into the nightclub into prominence. And so I think, um, yeah, this this was another build that really helped inspire what some something that I think is somewhat of a signature at prominence. Um, so yeah. Um, I, I cannot, uh, the, I think while there are tons and tons and tons of builds all over the place that really inspire me in lots of different ways. In fact, there's, there's so many more that I want to talk about. And I just simply will not unfortunately have time today. Um, I might even, I actually, I have to start wrapping this up because I need to get over to a DJ gig that I'm doing starting at 6 PM PST, which is in about 20 minutes here. Um, so I need to be prepare my stuff and, and make sure I'm ready to rock and roll at six for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think maybe I'll even just start wrapping it up here uh, so that way I don't get to start start talking about another topic and then have to cut it off in the middle. But I think that's like a good place to end sort of one po version 1.0 of builds that inspired me. Um, phase one per se, kind of like those are a lot of the very high level like big key aha moments i think i had was with a lot of the builds that i just showed today um again there's tons of little ways that watching hdxiv watching you know uh, people's tutorial videos looking at housing snap looking at housing twitter that little little bit, bits here and there all inspired me and stuff but i think a lot of the ones that i talked about in here um were the big like, whoa, that's, this change is not everything per se, but it, it definitely, 
got me thinking very like opened the door to new possibilities and new ways of thinking about a lot of this stuff and so those are the builds that really like excite me that that really inspired a lot of my work hopefully hopefully that narrative throughout the stream was you could track it Ho did were you guys able did you would you guys follow that like hopefully that kind of made some narrative sense leading from one thing to the next let's see and I, didn't, I even had a couple more here that I was starting to um, look at. Oh, you know what? Here, I, I want to maybe I'll wrap this up actually with with one more build that I want to shout out um, in particular. And this build isn't so much. I want to. I, I think like this is not so much. Uh, a build that I guess I necessarily pulled from directly so far. Um, but this is a build that I think really uh, struck me and is something that I use actually to show people housing when I when I talk about housing to people. Um, and it is, here, you'll see in a second here what I mean. It's this build by Oat Milk, um, who is another designer who I immensely, immensely respect for her phenomenal work uh, on her builds, the aesthetic that she creates, the atmosphere, and even her video editing is top notch. If you check out Oat Milk's Twitter here, and I'm gonna here, I'm gonna post this, the link to this tweet. Check out her Twitter, check out her work, it's amazing, but also check out her YouTube, where she posts these very under, I wanna say underrated at the moment, like, I mean, she d doesn't have that many followers and stuff, give her a follow though, look at her work. The video editing is is way better than it needs to be. It's so good. She has all these like whip pans and like, you know, like snap cuts and just like editing to the music, adding these little like effects and fade in and outs. And um, it's it's so fun to watch her her stuff on top of the fact that the actual work itself is beautiful and amazing. Um, but this build, this cafe, a bakery thing that she made was like, oh, my God goodness look at this look at this like aesthetic and the vibe of this place and um i think this is a this is a build where when i try to explain to my irl friends or like family even like that i have a nightclub in here or like that i build stuff i feel like this is actually one of the one of the tweets that i often come back to show people um what is possible in 14 basically so when I'm talking about housing, I say like, okay, you know, a basic house is like, you just put some couches down and these kinds of things. And there's nothing wrong with that per se, but like the cool, one of the coolest things that I find about it that really lights me up um, is this idea of being able to really um, push the limits of the game and kind of what's possible. Yeah, let me, oh, let me expand the view of this a little bit because you need to really see the full, the full view to appreciate. So, I show people this and I'm like, but people go crazy with this and they do stuff like this <laughs> and like, oh my gosh, right? Like, just like, I want to be here. Like, I want to be in this space. I want to, I want this to be real. I want to really go here in real life. Um, and, and I think that's something that's a lot of people respond when I show them. They go, oh my gosh, that looks like a, that looks like a real cafe. You know, almost like, especially at first glance from far away, right? Like, like, look at this counter, right? That looks like it convinced, like, if you saw this from far away, I could easily believe that this is like a, a count, like a bread bakery place in London or something, you know? Um, like this still is one of those builds that I come back to and I'm just like, this is just so well done, so beautifully tastefully put together by the way spiral thank you very much for that um su subscription with the prime gaming also welcome to the stream i'm glad to have you here unfortunately actually we're about to end although i'm about to do a dj set so if you're if you're around spiral i'm about to dj some uh but oh wait perfect too i want to shout i want to give you a shout out in case anyone's not aware my friend here spiral fruit is oh gosh um there we go spiral fruit is a dj 
as well in 14. And she, um, this is like a whole nother like anecdote, but like, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll TLDR it by saying that Spiral is one of the reasons I wanted to build um, Prominence the way I did. And even uh, like, she played at Ichi very early on when Ichi opened and completely changed, like, opened my eyes to a whole new way of looking at the club thing, like, realizing what's possible with with club setups and stuff there. Um, so, uh, she didn't even know that for the longest time. I actually didn't ever got a chance to say that to her, like, way back when. This is, like, over a year and a half or something ago. And um, I finally, though, uh, found her at Roth's, uh, one of Roth's after parties at the house and um his build and and i told her about this and um and now we've caught up and uh, and are be quickly becoming friends uh so yeah give give spiral fruit a listen uh if she's ever djing you'll you won't regret it she's she's phenomenal both in her visual uh the visual technological aspect um she's doing some really interesting creative stuff with her and her boyfriend deist and uh, she also has phenomenal mixing and musical taste that I absolutely vouch for. So give Spiral Fruit a follow and um, go check out her streams. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, so, I mean, uh, man, there's just no shortage of creativity in this. You know, there's no, there's just so much, so much amazing work being done by so many wonderful people. I seriously could go on for probably hours more about just talking about all the different builds. Uh, we'll pro I mean, if you guys are interested, we can try to maybe do like a, you know, 2.0 version of this. Uh, I'll try to trim it down and or even just a follow up, you know, uh, part two, part three or whatever. And we can just talk about more of these builds um, because and, and just talk about just more of the creative, amazing things people are doing out there. And again, um, what uh, if you know, you're watching this right now on Twitch, but if you're watching this on YouTube too, uh, in the future, via the VOD, uh, please look at the links that will be down in the description below and go follow these people. Go, um, go follow these people, go look up these builds, give them some extra likes and some extra retweets or whatever. I think it'd be kind of cool if like one of these older builds gets recirculated a little bit by the newer, you know, to the newer generation of housing people. Um, that'd be kind of fun, I think, for those designers to see some of their stuff pop off again. Uh, because you never know who, who you never know who could be, you know, inspired by this stuff. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, I think um, for today, though, I'm going to have to end the stream there so I can prepare for my DJ set over at Neon Sunset. And that's going to be for the next, well, starting at 6 p.m. So that's in about 15 minutes or so here. Actually, no, 12, 12 minutes from now here. Um, but uh, here, let me just post this in the chat. Neon Sunset, that's the address. Crystal, Goblin, Imperium, Ward 14, Plot 11. I'm going to be performing there for the next three hours, a DJ set. So um, if you're interested in that, Actually, I'm realizing, well, stick around, actually. It'll be in 10 minutes, so <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I might quickly either end the stream or I guess I could even leave the stream up really quick. Uh, no, you know, I, I think I need to end the stream, though. I need to reset some cables and stuff, and I don't want this thing popping and glitching. But if you want to stick around the channel, it's just going to pop back live in like 10 minutes. So um, yeah. I, uh, can I do this? I'm trying to think. Hey, Spiral. This is Spiral in game, by the way, Len. Um, yeah, I just don't want to, let me see. Maybe I can. Okay, I might just be able to leave this live. I was kind of thinking I need to just reset the title and stuff. I need the recording to separate. That's why. I'm going to clip click off the stream really quick and I'm going to have to restart it again just because I want the title to reset and I want a new recording to start from the Twitch VOD standpoint. But don't go anywhere, don't touch, don't touch that dial. We will be right back here um, in just a few minutes. So thank you though, everybody for coming to this housing stream. 
I really appreciate you guys listening to my my story, and hopefully you were inspired. You learned something, and uh, hopefully you go take a look at a lot of these wonderful artists and these builds. So um, again, if you want to stick around for the DJ set, don't go anywhere. Um, we'll be st I'll be starting here in ten minutes. I just need to switch over my um, setup here. So I actually I'll, I'll stick around here on the mic per se. Um, and I, I'll probably just right before the stream happens, we can clip it off or something. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think how I can, I want to do this, but, uh, here for the sake of the YouTube, uh, the VOD, I'm going to go to quickly to a thank you screen. And I think, um, from a YouTube perspective, this will be good evening and good night.